Hey, this is Stacy from Let's Cook, y'all. Welcome back to our channel. If you're new, welcome. We're really glad you're here. We hope you enjoy these weekly dinner videos and they give you some ideas for things to cook at your house. We'd love it if you'd hit that red subscribe button. We are back for a brand new week of some easy and delicious meals. I brought back a couple of favorites. I tried something totally new that I winged off the top of my head and we had a surprise. Hope you enjoy this week's video. First up this week, I had a couple of ingredients that I wanted to use up and I was feeling adventurous, so I decided to just kind of wing it. I took two chicken breasts and put them thawed out in my little West Bend oblong crock pot. I used some Italian seasonings, basil, oregano, a dash of chili flakes, some salt and pepper. Then I put some chopped onions and some minced garlic on them. I wanted to use up some pepperoni and marinara, so I kind of winged a recipe that we're going to call crock pot pizza chicken. I used the rest of a jar. I didn't even measure anything, so I don't have measurements for you guys. But this little West Bend has, instead of high and low settings, it does have some medium. So I put it on a medium setting and let the chicken start cooking. In the meantime, I had one zucchini that I cut into hopefully even sized rounds. I covered them with salt and pepper. I put them in my air fryer basket and sort of pre-cooked them for about six minutes. The chicken was pretty much cooked through, so I put a few more slices of pepperoni on top and then put some shredded mozzarella, put the cover back on to let it melt. I took the pre-cooked zucchini slices and did the same thing. I used some marinara or pizza sauce. I put a pepperoni on each one and the same shredded mozzarella and put them back in the air fryer to cook about three minutes. We'll see how this new recipe is for crock pot pizza chicken. I continued the theme. I cut up some zucchini and did them in the air fryer, cooked them first and then topped them with the same uh, flavors, pizza sauce, pepperoni, and mozzarella and did the same thing in the salad. Added pepperoni, mozzarella, black olives, and stuff to it and stuff to the salad. We will fix our plates. I'll show you a quick picture. New recipe, crock pot pizza chicken is what's for dinner tonight. Just a note about these zucchini slices. They were really good, hot out of the air fryer, but they did not work well as leftovers. They were really mushy. But the meal overall was really good. I loved the pizza chicken. I like things cooked in tomato sauce. Tim was not as much of a fan, but I thought it was really delicious. And it was a good, quick, easy meal using things I had on hand. For tonight's dinner, I started by chopping up both the whites and the greens of some green onions. And I took out my last package of bacon that we got at Sam's Club. I'll have to get some more. Tim absolutely loves bake anything with bacon. I had fresh mushrooms this time. We do have a video on this recipe. Uh, I much prefer fresh mushrooms, but I have used can. I sliced some baby bella mushrooms. I thawed out my last package of shrimp from the freezer. These are already peeled and deveined and the tails off. I used some paper towels and tried to get them as dry as I could before I seasoned them and coated them in flour. And I thought I had my camera on. Two cups of water, one cup for one can of chicken broth, three fourths a cup of half and half of milk, and some salt. We'll bring this to a boil and then add the grits. Once you finish cooking the bacon, remove it and let it drain on some paper towels, but don't pour out all the grease. We'll need at least a tablespoon or two, or if you're in the south, you might leave a little more. Make sure it's hot and then go ahead and add the mushrooms. We'll start browning those. In the meantime, I checked on my grits. They were about thick, so I added the rest of the ingredients. Quite a bit of butter, quite a bit of Parmesan cheese, quite a bit of your choice of shredded cheese, and I added some white pepper and hot sauce. We are southern born and bred, but I promise these are so good. Once the mushrooms have finished browning, we'll go ahead and add the whites and the greens of the green onions and sweat both of those out. While the veggies finish cooking, we're going to finish the shrimp. I just salt and peppered them, tossed them in some flour, and... It's not in my original recipe, but I have it on hand, so I'm also going to add a little obey. Bay. 
The original recipe calls for just a half a cup of chicken broth, but I usually use more than that. We like the sauce. I always start with just a little bit, and I went ahead and put the lemon juice in here. I like to take the chicken broth and use it to deglaze the pan. All the flavor is in that stuff on the bottom. Uh, I watched the TV show The Chew years ago, and they called it the fond. It's all the little brown bits that are stuck on the skillet, so I spend a lot of time adding in broth slowly and trying to scrape up all that bits and get all that flavor to incorporate into this amazingly delicious pan sauce. I went ahead and added more chicken broth than my recipe called for. I was in a saucy mood today. The sauce is good over the grits. So I'll plate it up, show you what our plates look like for shrimp and grits. I checked them at six, they look done, so they only take six minutes in the air fryer at 350. So it may be a little labor intensive for a weeknight, but it is definitely a favorite in this house. It is something we do not splurge on very often, but we have shrimp and grits tonight, some crescent rolls from the air fryer. I was going to make a salad and Tim said, I'm good with shrimp and grits. He will probably put some more hot sauce on his can make them as thick or as saucy as you like. I was in a saucy mood today, so the shrimp sauce is a little thinner, but it'll be great over the cheese grits. That's what's for dinner tonight. Tonight's dinner, I wanted to serve on hamburger buns and I didn't have any in the house or the freezer, so I got out my bread machine. Back in the height of the pandemic, probably in April, I was on the hunt for yeast and a very sweet friend of mine found the huge two pack of yeast at Sam's Club, so now I've got more yeast than I could use in a year or two. So I tried to be a little intentional. This is a recipe that uses both white flour and wheat flour. I feel like it's moderately better for us but I went ahead and put all the ingredients in in my bread machine. You put the liquids on the bottom and then all the dry ingredients and then make a well and put the yeast in the very top. And I did it on the dough setting for an hour and a half. Tonight's meal is an easy crock pot one that we have shared in a really old video. What I like about crock pot meals, you can set them earlier in the day. What I like about this one, you do everything all in one bowl. So I'm mixing up um, some egg and seasonings and then I'm gonna add chopped onion your choice of meat. I'm using ground chicken. You can use turkey or beef. To make these, we're going to make some giant meatballs. So we're going to mix everything up as well as we can and then start working in breadcrumbs. I don't ever measure and some Parmesan cheese. I just keep working with the meat until I get it the consistency of the meatball to hold together that I want to. Not too dry, not too wet. Again, I've brought out my little West Bend slow cooker. I've had this over 20 years. My mom's been gone 18 years and she gave it to me before she died. I'm going to be so sad when this thing finally gives up the ghost. You can certainly do these in any kind of a crock pot. You're going to take the same bowl and use either a can of pasta sauce, spaghetti sauce. I just use tomato sauce and beef it up with onion and garlic and pretty much the same seasonings that I use to make the meatballs and I even add a little Parmesan cheese at the end. The original recipe calls for adding dry red wine. We never have that, but feel free to add it. You're going to cover the meatballs and cook them until they're done. In my little West Bend, this doesn't take very long because it cooks pretty high and pretty fast. Isn't that big blob of dough gorgeous? I used to be so scared of making yeast breads, but I conquered that fear and now I actually love like it. I love working with the dough. I did need a little extra flour. I tried to go ahead and roll it out. My intention was to make sliders and I messed up. I made these in really large size hamburger shapes, but basically the, the less you work with the dough, the better. So I rolled it out into a long log. I cut it with my bench cutter, bench scrape. You could just use a sharp knife. Uh, you probably can't tell, but I did that one time on my pastry mat, and now it has a large slit in it from me slicing it with the knife. But just work them out to the size you want. All right. You gonna leave that? Man, it's off and it's on warm. Okay. So let them rise for about 42 minutes. All right, nothing like some cooked dough. I was thinking tablecloths or whatever those things are. Stop it. 
That boy cracks me up. Apparently I need to uh, write ranch mix again on my reusable label. This is something that I make and keep on hand and use often. Today I'm just adding some mayonnaise and milk and making it thick for a dip. I checked my meatballs to make sure they were done. I went ahead and flipped them all over and then I had seen something on a cooking show and I had bought this big pack of um, sliced mozzarella at Sam's Club, so this is one of the things I tried using it for. I took my two sheet pans covered out of the warm oven and they had about doubled in size. I will bake these in a 400 degree oven for about, I think it's 12 minutes. I'll check my recipe and leave a note. My homemade slider buns, I did not size very well. They're more like full size buns, but we're going to work with it. The crock pot meatballs, the mozzarella is way melted. Hopefully that will be good. I have not tried this variation. It's based on something I saw on food TV. And I offered Tim some fries from the air fryer, chips. He picked crudite, so I just cut up what I had. Broccoli, carrots, radishes, mushrooms. Had a little bit of cheese left. Made up some homemade ranch. That's our quick, easy dinner tonight. If you buy the buns, obviously if you make them, it takes a little longer. We will make our plates. I'll show you a quick picture. That's what's for dinner tonight. Tonight we're having leftovers. I had a bunch of these buns and I had some French dip in the freezer that I had made in a previous video. I'll try to leave a link to that. We cook it all day in the crock pot and we had some left so I froze it for an easy meal later on and today is that day to use. It's really good with homemade buns, just some au jus and Tim's having apparently one kind of pork skin and then some other kind of chip. Oh, here he goes. Two pork skins and French dip leftovers on the buns is what's for dinner tonight. Every time I chop onions I think of Meryl Streep in that old movie Julia and Julie. Y'all remember that movie? I'm back again with the ranch dip. This time I'm making a dressing and I'm also going to make it a more of a Mexican, so I'm going to add more milk to thin it out as well as some cumin and lime to give it a little Tex Mex flavor. cheese you can soften some cream cheese and add it to make them even creamier you can of course add meat to this and I would probably cut back on the others but this is actually a meatless meal that Tim will eat this is an easy black bean and cheese enchiladas so I just made the filling added more cheese rolled them up in flour tortillas had a little bit left over you can definitely use enchilada sauce and I do have a can but I'm saving that for another recipe and the actual recipe really calls for salsa but most anything will work you can add meat you can add the cream cheese you can add more spices so this was about two and a half cups of salsa total which is why I buy these really big jars from Sam's Club Bake in a preheated 400 degree oven for about 10-15 minutes just till everything is hot and bubbly and the cheese is melted. A few things make me happier. We haven't had Mexican or Tex-Mex in a week or two so I made some black bean and cheese enchiladas. You can add meat, you can use uh, veggie meatless crumbles whatever floats your boat and you can also use enchilada sauce as I said rather than the salsa when I was digging for something in the pantry I found 
this package of yellow rice I didn't even remember buying. So it's time to use that. It's got a little turmeric in it. Maybe that will help with my anti-inflammatory. Normally when I have an avocado, I make guacamole, but in the interest of trying to be a little healthier, I made a avocado salad with some homemade ranch, Mexican ranch. I will dish up our plates, show you a quick picture. That's what's for dinner tonight. I had other ideas, but someone offered me an alternative that I jumped on. We've had a new place open up in the middle of a pandemic. They opened, we think about three weeks ago, a takeout Chinese place about 15 minutes from our house. Hot. Hot. Tim got General So's he's trying. We hope that they're good and that they stay open. They had a drive through so we didn't have to go in. Sure. I got shrimp with broccoli. We ordered a buffet. We got shrimp lo mein. Our entrees came with rice. We're gonna try their egg drop soup. And we ordered some spring rolls. Wait, did you just get something out of mine? Mm -hmm. Oh my. Good. Chinese buffet. Thank you, Tim. That's what's for dinner tonight. After our Chinese buffet last night, we've got enough left for tonight. Tim got more leftovers, including some of my shrimp with broccoli, I'd like to point out. You didn't have your name on it. I need to have my name on it. I'm fixing to warm mine up in the microwave. And we still have enough for another day, I do believe. Why this, do you like Chinese so much? This place gives big portions. Why do I like Chinese so much? That's a story. You want story time? Story time. When Tim and I were dating on our third or fourth date, he took me to a Chinese restaurant and I did not know how to eat chopsticks. And he taught me and I was very embarrassed and very shy and very... I don't know about all that very. I was. I had a hard time learning how to use chopsticks, but you he kept natural. He kept taking me back, and pretty soon I got as good with chopsticks as I am with a fork. So now we own two or three pair, and we have them at our house. We have these. We have these red ones good that we bought. Catching flies. No, Mr. Miyagi, it's good for snatching my food off of your plate. <laughs> so once again, Chinese leftovers is what's for dinner tonight. Thanks so much for stopping by this week. Have a wonderful and truly blessed day, y'all.